Okay, let's try and illustrate this reserve required ratio through an example. Let's imagine you have a bank. Um, let's call it Bank A. And they have reserves of 60. They have um, loans of 1,140. And they have deposits of 1,200. Now when we talk about deposits, we're talking about checkable deposits. These are deposits which are, is money in the bank, and let's imagine it in terms of the bank having money, but then issuing a checkbook. And that checkbook, those people have that right to that money through that checkbook, but they haven't actually used the money yet. That's what we talk about when we think of deposits. So they've then got deposits of 1,200, that's how much people could write the check for and then take that money and that's how much money would go out. They've got reserves of 60 from those deposits and they've, lo they've lent out the rest. They've lent out the rest to other businesses, corporations, anything. Okay, so that's where we're sitting at the moment. Let's say the reserve requirement that's given by the Reserve Bank is equal to 0.05 or 5%. Now, how can we calculate whether this bank has enough reserves for that? So, you need the reserve requirement must be the actual reserves, the reserves that the bank has, divided by the checkable deposit. So, let's just see. You've got 1,200 is your deposit, and to have a reserve requirement of 5%, you can times that by 0 0.05, which will then equal 60. So the requirements that you should have, according to the reserve requirements, are exactly 60, and your reserves are 60, so your reserve requirement is perfect. Now, let's say that the reserve bank says that your reserve requirement can decrease to 3%. So if your reserve requirement decreases to 3%, what are your excess reserves going to be? Well, if it's only 3%, you know that your reserves need to be smaller than 60. So your excess reserves, excess reserves are going to be equal to 60 minus that 3% times by your deposits, which is equal to 24. So you now have excess reserves of 24 units. So what is a bank going to do? A bank doesn't want to keep more reserves than it needs to keep because if it loans out more money, it can make money from loaning out more money. When a reserve, when a bank gets money, they can loan it out at a high interest rate and so make money by loaning that money out. So they're going to want to try and loan this money out. Let's say that they can loan this money out, but only in terms of granting new deposits, i.e. in terms of giving more people a checkbook. They can do that by giving more people a checkbook, and let's say that those people, when they get those checkbooks and they spend that money, the money doesn't come back into this bank. Let's say the money they spend goes into, if you spend money, let's say, in a shop, you would give that shopkeeper money, and then that shopkeeper would deposit money. Let's say that that shopkeeper can't deposit money with bank A, it has to use another bank. So, you've now got your excess reserves of 24, they're going to want to lend out that money. Let's say they've granted the new deposits, but that money hasn't actually been left yet. What do you think is going to be the status of your loans, of your deposits, and of your reserves? So, your loans, your deposits, and your reserves after that bank has now granted that checkbook, but nothing has been spent yet. So your loans are going to increase by 24. So you're going to get loans of 1,164. That makes sense. You've, loan, you've lent out more money, so your loans increase by 24. Your deposits, your checkable deposits, the amount of money that you have, have also increased by 24. So it's gone to 1,224, because you've increased the amount of deposits or checks available to the society out in 
the economy. But your reserves remain at 60 because those people haven't actually spent any more of that money. So your reserves remain at 60, your checkable deposits have increased by your excess reserves because you've issued more checks to the value of 24, but they haven't used them yet, so the reserves, the actual money that you have has stayed the same. Now what happens if those people now use that money? If they use that money and you assume it doesn't come back into your bank, and you assume it goes to banks B and C and D, what happens to your loans, your deposits and your reserves now that they've used those checks? So this is the scenario when they've granted the checks to the economy but the people who've been granted the new deposits or granted the checks haven't used those checks yet. So the reserves remain the same whereas your deposits, how many deposits or checks you've issued has increased. Now what happens when they actually use that money? So those checks are actually used. Let's have a look at what happens to the loans, deposits, and reserves. The loans, the amount you've loaned out, remains the same. It's still 1,164. Your deposits, the checks that you've now been issued, they've used that money, so that 24 is now decreased to 1,200. So your deposits decrease, but now because they've used that money, the money in your reserves has been taken out. So that 24 has been taken out, and you're left with 36. So this is the scenario once they've granted the new deposits and then the new deposits have been used in terms of cash and it's gone towards other banks. This example can get quite complicated and you should be able to do it, you would be able to do it in a tutorial. It's when the money that gets used gets put back into this account, back into bank A. If it gets put back into bank A, the deposits would increase again and you would go through the whole system once more. You would keep on increasing your deposit and having to increase your reserve because 3% of that money is needed. So if extra 100 rand came in but from yourself you would increase deposits by 100 but, and then you would keep 3% of those new deposits and loan out the rest. So there would be very much a circular problem involved in this type of example if the money came back into your own bank. You would have to keep on increasing um, your deposits and then increasing your loans if it increased by say if your deposits increased by 100, you would loan out 3% of 100 and you would have to keep reserves equal to 3% of your deposits. So that's what the story would be. Now, what has happened to money supply in this example? Well, the only thing we can tell is that money supply has increased because your reserves have decreased from 60 to 36 and you've lent that money out and in terms of loans. So your loans has increased, so the amount of money you're lending out to the economy has increased, whereas before your loans was 1,140, your loans are now 1,164, so you've increased the money in the economy. You cannot tell by how much the, the money in the economy has increased because you don't know what the other banks have done with their loans and their deposits. You don't know if they've kept at 3% or if they're keeping their money.